Hello, and welcome to my Let's Play of Terraria. More than a Let's Play, this series is going to be a speedrun of the game. Since there really is no end game to Terraria, I've set my own goals that I feel like I should achieve in order to complete the game. The goals that I have set for myself are to defeat every single spawnable boss in the game. As of version 1.2, there are 11 bosses that I need to defeat. These include Eye of Cthulhu, either the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu, Skeletron, Wall of Flesh, the Twins, the Destroyer, Skeletron Prime, Queen Bee, King Slime, Plantera, and the Golem. I'll be trying to defeat all of these bosses as quickly as I can. The first boss on the list is the Eye of Cthulhu. Now there's two ways that you can get the spawning item required for it. Either you can farm six lenses at night to get the suspicious looking eye, or you can go underground and look in chests for it. From experience, getting six lenses is going to take a while to do, so I decided to go underground looking for the suspicious looking eye. There are a few things I wanted to do before going underground though, mainly building a house to get the NPCs to move into. I wanted to get my house three stories tall for three NPCs, the first being the guide of course, and then the other two being the nurse and the merchant. Since there is a chance I'll find a crystal heart underground, the nurse could move in before the merchant, which is why I have three buildings instead of two. Getting the merchant early on is very important for this run, because that means I can buy shurikens from him to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. As time goes on, I'll need more housing for more NPCs, but I'm not concerned with that right now. I need to get underground and find the Eye as soon as possible. Ideally, I'll want to get the Eye before the end of the second night, though I will settle for getting it at the end of the third night. This is actually my 10th attempt at getting this run to work. The first few times I tried, I was farming for lenses with no luck. Then I went underground and had no luck finding any suspicious looking eyes. And then there was one time where I actually fought the Eye of Cthulhu, but died. As the series progresses, you'll notice that I slow down the video to real time for a few things. One of them is to see the items that I get from chests, and the other is to showcase notable moments, such as boss fights or anything else I feel is important. I will include commentary throughout the run to give my insight on various situations that occur. Mainly, this will be me telling you the reasons why I did things, and also explaining why I need certain things done. So, as you can see from the video right now, I messed up the dimensions on the house and I had to rebuild. Not that big of a deal, but a bit of a time killer. You'll notice that in the first chest that I found that I got an umbrella. It's a pretty handy item, but I don't actually get much use out of it in this run. So, again, in this chest I find an umbrella. I would have much preferred climbing claws or a spear or something, but I guess I'll just sell the umbrella for money later. Now that the housing is done and I've explored the spawning area, it's time to go out and look for a cave. And so, in our third chest, I don't find any very useful items, though I did find a good bit of silver. I need 50 silver in order to spawn the merchant, so getting a little bit of silver is actually pretty helpful. I was a bit disappointed to run into the crimson so early on. Early on, it's very difficult to cross the crimson, because I've got very low health and no armor or weapons. It also means that the boss I'll be fighting second is the Brain of Cthulhu, and I consider that a little bit harder than the Eater of Worlds. Right here I really thought I was going to die and have to restart the run, but fortunately I found a little hole and blocked myself off. This did mean though that I was going to have to dig my way over to the left and waste a little bit of time. Fortunately there was a cave that I could enter just next to me, so it wasn't that big of a deal.
In this chest I find an aglet, which is a decent item to get early on. It doesn't hurt to get equipment as early as possible. At this point with the chests I've found, I've gotten a decent amount of shurikens and potions, which will be very handy in the Eye of Cthulhu fight. While I'm down here, I'm also going to be collecting as much ore as possible. Mainly I'm looking for iron ore and gold ore, as I'll be using those throughout most of the run, in some way or another. Another thing that I keep an eye out for are gems. Gems are very useful for getting money early on in the game, and you can also use them to craft into various things. I'm wanting to get 15 of any gems so I can craft them into a grappling hook, which is a very good maneuvering item in the game. Unfortunately though, I did miss that amethyst up at the top left, though I do get some more gems later on, so don't worry. I need to pay close attention to where I'm going underground, because there are traps everywhere. Hitting one of those could mean the end of my run, and I don't want that. So as I'm mining this gold, I get a stroke of luck with this bat that I fight. It drops a chain knife, which is a very good early game poking item. It means that I don't need to craft a broadsword, and I can just use that to keep enemies at bay. As I'm looking around for chests, I notice an underground mushroom biome over to the right. In most cases, those biomes contain at least one golden chest, so I decide to dig over to it. I check my inventory to see how many silver coins that I have. Remember, I need 50 of them to get the merchant to spawn. Seeing as how I have enough coins, I know that the merchant will spawn soon. NPCs only spawn during the daytime, so seeing when he spawns will give me a good indicator on when I need to return to the surface.
and just like I was hoping for, I find a golden chest. If you want to see what I find in the golden chest, stay tuned for episode 2. You can access the next video by clicking the annotation in the middle of the screen. Also, be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of this Terraria speedrun.